Welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and this is day three of the session 2023. Now, before we do this, of course, I want you to check out onlinemagic.co. Onlinemagic.co have about 800 videos, but they could all be rubbish, couldn't they? But they're not, because they've been built up over 10 years. And uh, live sessions every week for 9 99 a month. That's the price of a coffee a week. Don't be silly. Go and have a look at it and have a look at the testimonials. People love it, they do. And uh, like and subscribe, if I didn't say that already. Probably did. Um, now, this is recorded about 10 minutes after day two, because as I mentioned at the, on the first one, these are done after the session. Uh, a couple of things to say. <laughs> about 10 minutes ago, as I said at the end of the last one, uh, my camera collapsed and I've been, oh, it's, been, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. Let's just say that. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, I think it's working now, but we'll see at the end of it um, if I have a, uh, a mild breakdown. Well, not quite so mild. But uh, so I, I'm aware, by the way, that I'm kind of banging through this. This is more of a rundown of what, you know, I could have said so much more, uh, for example, about Nick DeFat's show. I kind of didn't want to go through everything he did. I think it's something that people should enjoy. And uh, and I know that Blackpool's coming up. I know Nick's not going to be at Blackpool, but there are a lot of people you're going to see over the next year or two that I don't, you, I, I just feel weird about saying everything that everybody did in the lecture. It kind of gives it away. So... Uh, needless to say, this is a very brief rundown. Do put your opinions if you're there below of all these videos and I will again talk about them and mention them in the uh, upcoming live sessions on Thursdays, 5 UK time. Okay, so in the same tradition, I'm going to run through day three. Now, Art or Arthur, Dr. Arthur, Dr. Arthur Benjamin uh, is another mathematician. Well, not... <laughs> So I was like, oh, just another one of them mathematics, you know. Um, no, so for me, it was Matt Baker and Arthur Benjamin were the two people that were talking about math with numbers, magic, magic with numbers. Uh, and Art's lecture was just an absolute joy. It, it, he did, he, he would have preferred, he said, to do his show and then lecture on what he did in his show, but he... He knew his show was coming up, so he did a different thing for the lecture, which was Magic Squares. Now, I love Magic Squares now, ever since I read Doug Diamond's book, and I've always enjoyed watching them performed. Uh, I think they do have a, a kind of paradoxical rhythm to them that you think, oh, it's just numbers in a square, but actually the way they build up, I think they, they can be very magical. And then Doug Diamond's book, uh, Calculated Thoughts, had a great chapter on them, and this was a great lecture on them. Really enjoyed it. Arthur is a really engaging and vibrant and excited and comforting in that weird way. He, there's one moment where he said, I like it, something like I like when students do what teachers said. He made, he made you repeat, you know, he could have told the answer, but he said, and what's the answer? And he made everybody do it. He said, I'd like to get my students involved or something like that. But it was very, it was like watching a really good entertainer, but at the same time, a great teacher. And it made me want to kind of learn from him and sort out my awful um, ability with numbers. So in that way, that's what I mean, it's kind of comforting. He, he kind of took you through these things, understanding that they were difficult. And there, yes, there was a couple of times when he lost me. I was like, why is he doing that? Um, but it, he did break it down enough so I could understand why things were happening. And he started off with a basic magic square, which I still think is pretty magical, um, up to the more advanced one where you ask someone's birthday and you do all the numbers. But, you know, I understood 90% of it, which is a lot for me. And then he did a little bit of what he was going to do is show in squaring numbers, get people to call out numbers and squares them, call out a um, the year of their birth and he could tell them what day they were born on, uh, which was just great. And they could Google it if, if people weren't sure if they wanted to find out what day they were born on. And then he project it into the future, which actually he did in his show. But really lovely stuff. Again, very, very enjoyable uh, for somebody talking about numbers, which usually leaves me completely cold. And then it was Nick... Uh, DeFat's lecture. As I said, show's great, lecture was great, and it was all different stuff. He was lecturing, understandably, um, and thankfully, a loads of stuff out of his book, because I'd flicked through it, I'd read a couple of routines, and I think, you know, these routines, you read them and you know they're good, but to see them performed brings the humour of them, and some 
sometimes the magic of them together, you, you kind of get it. And that's, I think I said on stage at the session, the importance of sometimes seeing something on video, I think, even though we prefer books, a lot of us, it, it makes you go, oh, right, that, that's what it's meant to look like. And, you know, from his rope routine, he's got a rope routine, which was called, oh, oh School of Hard Knots, there you go. <laughs> That was an entertaining bit, wasn't it? Me staring at a bit of paper, not being able to read my own writing. Uh, which is, again, you know, when I read a rote routine in the book, I kind of go, I, I do fiber optics, I don't need any more of that. But great contact lens routine. Now, I've been doing a gag with contact lenses for years. I think I saw Ben Woodward do it years ago, and then Home and Leewag stuff with contact lenses. I love contact lens magic. I don't know why. I, I, the bit I do instantly is I'm in the middle of a trick, and I just kind of go, sorry. And I kind of build up to this thing of, God, it keeps getting to my contact lenses. And, and then the, the massive contact lens comes out. Um, and, then, and then actually I'd read Nick's book before doing a gig the other day. And, he, and I, that was it for me. That was the gag. But I was, I then, I just read this little bit. And then I do a thing where I kind of vanish it, but they don't know I vanished it and pop it back in there, which I'd got from that. He's got a great bill switch, which he started with called Play Money, uh, where he gets things to Monopoly Money and turns it into into a bill which is really really visual and you know like pops uh, and you know with a tiny bit of handling you can hand it out for examination and his work on the dye tube you know and these are tricks that on their, their own I kind of like but he reminds us how strong something can play if you put the right character behind it and if you put a bit of thought behind it and a bit of a premise and, and Nick's someone again I don't want to go on about him because it sounds very gushy but it did kind of have that effect on me where Yes, we talk about how magic's got to have meaning, but when we see someone just doing really strong comedy magic with such a comfortable persona, you realise that it doesn't really. Yes, it has to have a premise, but it doesn't, you know, you can just do great magic and, and be really funny, and that's fine. And, you know, all the stuff in his show with the, the, the ring routine he did, with the ring ended up on his sock, with the whole process about him getting someone in the audience cutting his sock off, all that stuff was just you know, made you realise the power of presentation, but that it doesn't have to have some sort of deeper meaning. So, brilliant stuff. Highly recommend the book, um, which I shall be reviewing in more depth at some point, and we'll hopefully have Nick on the channel. The Richard Turner interview lecture. I'm glad it was an interview, and it wasn't just a lecture, because I, did, I love hearing his stories. And as he says, he will go off on kind of... He's very aware, because he starts going off on a tangent. You think, where's this going? And he says, actually, I'm going off on a tangent here. And, 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 you know, he, he said to Josh, Josh, make sure you bring me back. And I think that made it for me. I was kind of didn't want to see loads of second deal and cent deal and bottom deal demonstrations. Saying that, he did enough of that for me to get the cards out as I was listening to him and kind of go, oh, yeah, if I could do that. So it was just the right amount of he would be asked a question, he would get the cards out, he would do a demonstration. You know, there's a bit we struggle with a demonstration. He got it wrong a couple of times, but then he got it right. And it was... And that was, again, good to see someone that can kind of, you know, sometimes when we get magic tricks wrong, we can panic and someone go, OK, actually, should, we, should I try it again? Yeah, and, and that being all right. It was a lovely hour. Um, he was presented with the um, Guest of Honour uh, poster at the end, which Michal Kachalek uh, designed. Oh, my words aren't coming out because I had to remember Michal's name. Probably got it wrong as well. But that was all great and it was a, a lovely afternoon. Now, talking about just doing magic well without any kind of premise, and he did actually have a, a good premise for a lot of his stuff, but not, again, this kind of overarching theme, was Jackie Yu. Now, Jackie Yu was, as I said in the intro, one of the few people that, you know, I've been sent a link. You know we all get sent links to people that aren't magicians going, oh, you'll love this, and it's just someone we've known for 20 years doing a trick online that we've seen hundreds of times. We have to go, yeah, great. Uh, well, someone sent me Jackie's stuff and I'd never seen it and it just blew me away. His imagination and the way he takes, you know, from, from his, I'll finish the sentence probably, the way he takes uh, classic ideas and develops them, but also these really new ideas. And that's why I say he did have premise. So instead of just doing a ball and cone, the cone would come out of a sticker on a bit of paper and, and all that. So that, there was a kind of magical universe or premise within the universe itself, but it wasn't a wider story. And he... You know, if you see his magic castle act online, it's brilliant. All the stuff he makes specifically for social media is excellent. He's got this wonderful, charming personality, the whole kind of, you know, the catchphrase thing, am oh I, you know, all this, and it doesn't sound like that. And I'm refusing to do it in the way he does it because I won't be able to. But it, but it really fits him and he's just this really enigmatic, 
excitable guy that it, and it's contagious and I just loved his stuff and incidentally lovely 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 off stage as well he his lecture was brilliant because it's all this it reminded me to go back to the things that I love which are the classics he did a mini Lincoln ring routine you know with a fingering as you know we've seen Matthew Garrett developed with you know gets on his glasses so it's got all this kind of added stuff but it, the, the heart of it is the is the classics and you know I've, I've been obsessed with this Conan ball routine um oh my cone's not there was it oh yeah ah, where's that gone that's gonna worry me now oh yeah so this Conan ball routine I've been obsessed with for years right and I well I couldn't get and I performed it on stage and then I was kind of a few people said to me yeah but it doesn't make any sense what it's a Conan it's a ball what is it so it kind of I got a bit self-conscious about it and stopped doing it and then I saw Jackie do it and went well it doesn't have to be anything it's just really lovely funny quirky magic so it, it you know I walked out of that going I've got to get back to this stuff and he did some really he did a really lovely version almost like Troy who's his Chinese charming challenge that one but instead of having the coins on a rope he had them in a plastic bag and they would penetrate the plastic bag the clear plastic bag one at a time so he again he'd taken that and whether he'd taken it from there or not but developed that uh, or whether he came up with it independently but a really Again, some of those moves were very similar where you see the coin melting through the bag. He had this lovely thing where he would, someone would name their card and he'd make it appear. He had his hand in the plastic bag appear and then change it. And it was like a back palm switch, you know, which was, you know, really technical. But within that, he had all these lovely other ideas as well, folding up the bit of paper and the ball ending up in the cone and disappearing from the cone and showing an empty bit of paper and then folding the cone up and the ball coming out of there lovely stuff and again just reminded me that just magic that looks lovely and magical and quirky is enough to create something very special and the gala show not loads to say but because it's people we've already talked about but it was an exercise in less is more it's mark james hosting it and doing some great stuff like the traditional kind of fire breathing cigar boxes stuff i've seen to be honest so many times being a street performer you know but it's solid solid stuff and he does it in that kind of circus barker kind of way that, that you know, very tight, very, very good MC uh, and really skilled and, get, and gave it that sort of bit of variety um, within the magic. So a really, really good host uh, was Mark. And then we had Arthur Benjamin, which was, a rev you know, a bit like his lecture. You go, right, we're opening with numbers. Stand innovation at the beginning because of that act. It was a really dynamic, fun, entertaining way of performing maths on stage, you know? He's getting people to shout out numbers and he's, he's got people on stage with calculators and he's saying, right, I'm gonna square any two digit number, bang, got it, right, now is that right? Three digit numbers, four digit numbers, and then he's got numerous, he's got four or five people, four people on stage, I think, each come up with their own four digit number. He squares it quicker than they can do it on the calendar, and then he does all four of them. And it just becomes ridiculous, and it just becomes funny. Everybody's laughing and just kind of going, you know, this is so complex and so difficult. And then he does one where he talks through, I think it's a five-digit number, he talks through how he's doing it, and it's really magical. And then he gets someone on stage and who's, who he's trained and taught to do the birthday thing where people can name their birthday. Was that in the show or was that in the lecture? Anyway, they can name... Uh, the day they were born uh, and the year they were born, he can tell you the dates they were born, sorry, and he can tell you what day it was. And then he'd go, okay, name any date in the future, any any year. So the year was 77, 7,777, this day, and it, he could tell you what day it was. Uh, it was just really entertaining. The crowd were just up on their feet straight away and a perfect opening to a show, surprisingly. I mean, I knew he was going to be good because I'd seen him lecture, but I didn't know it was going to be that dynamic and just hold everybody um, to that level. Then um, Morton Christensen was an act, like I've said before, he hasn't got his act online. He came on stage and... I thought, oh, this is interesting, and it completely blew me away, but moved me. It moved me. It, it was very, very funny and very clever, but it, there were a couple of moments in it that, you know, Morton has autism, so I could see he was building on that sort of frustration, I, I believe, or maybe it was just speaking to me with my ADHD, this kind of frustration of not being able to remember where you are and kind of trying to remember that and that, and it, it was like seeing my brain played out on stage, 
but in this really clever way and there's a moment and i don't want to ruin it in case you see it but there's a moment where he kind of he's getting frustrated and this thing happens and it kind of got me and i just went whoa that's on so many levels that works for me you, you know it told me something about him it told me something about his creativity but maybe his life a little bit as well and he came off stage and again the crowd were up and it was it was a moving magical wonderful uh piece of routine and i'm so glad he hasn't put it online i hope it doesn't go online because it's going to get played to death and everybody's going to see it and it's kind of going to ruin that mystique but you need to see that not knowing what's going to happen and i just thought it was a just a great great piece of work so many levels to it like i've said and very very funny as well as well as um again quite moving my kobe just Great act, <laughs> you know, <laughs> bring him on stage, there's like a couple of minutes we can hear his voice backstage, kind of going, I'm on my way. So, again, in a very different way, but this kind of feeling of confusion about it. But then, you know, delivering, it seems like such a mess, like it's all going wrong, but then it all comes together. It was not like Danny de Ortiz, but there were, it was that feeling of seeing someone come out that was giving something new to, to arguably old, old ways of doing things but felt very, very fresh. Uh, and at the end, we had Jackie Yu, which, you know, we got two FISM, three FISM winners, because Jackie, I think, won it um, before the last one, I think. But uh, just a funny, dynamic, lovely, doing different stuff that he did in the lecture. This whole thing of, of having this hole and, and saying, someone like, I can't remember, it, when you go through the hole, it's like being at home, or when you come out, it's like when and he'd, put, and he'd be, bringing like washing up, not washing up, like wash clothes on a line out of the thing and then and then the ball would go in and then he, it would disappear and he'd pull it back out again. It was like using the hole as a dimension, different dimension, which we've seen many times, but done in that Jackie U way, which is like nobody else. A lovely finish to a lovely show. It was just, it just, everybody wanted more. The show finished and people were like, oh no, is that it? But of course that is exactly what you want. Uh, and that was not in a negative way. People left the auditorium buzzing, talking about it, had a great night, and uh, it was a really special end to a very special convention. For me, it's the best experience I've had at a convention for a long time, probably because of what I was doing there, it felt very different, but I think because of the strength of, of the whole thing. It was a good mix of theory and skill, not too much of these overlong, well, there's none of this kind of overlong explaining card tricks again and again. It's just enough. It's like everybody knew that they couldn't push that too much. Uh, and there was a, just a great atmosphere in, in the whole thing. And people, other than the fact the price of drinks was nonsense, um, and everybody knows that, but <laughs> you know, everybody, well, you got to have something to complain about, haven't you? So that's what we all complain about the price of the drinks. Uh, but other than that, just a great social experience. Um, I love the fact it's all in one place. I love the fact all the lectures happen in one place. The dealers aren't too over the top. It's like five or six dealers. So you don't get that kind of thing of kind of getting drowned in, oh, no, I want to buy all this stuff. It, 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 it just felt like a, um, like a lovely, lovely convention, as I say. So there you go. A um, bit of a waffle, but as it always is, any questions because I've only banged through it all, do put them below and I'll try and get to them over the next couple of weeks on the Thursday evenings. Thanks to Vanishing Inc, um, Josh and Andy and George, etc., for having me on and asking me to do it and putting on a great convention. And uh, thank you for watching this. Please do now go and check out onlinemagic.co if you like that. Uh, you love it. Hang on, if you like, what was it? If you like this, you'll love that probably. Um, <laughs> uh, and like and subscribe. Thanks very much and get over to my Instagram at Steve Faulkner.